So first we have to like introduce ourselves to the camera. Okay. So what's your like name and current job and everything okay. like that? Okay, I'm Mrs. Karen Fritz mm -hmm. and I am a teacher at um, Family Life Academy, a second grade teacher. And I um, am really interested to do this because I lived in Alabama. Yes, okay, so that's exactly, this is why I'm doing this interview project because I learned you like lived in like the deep south of the like civil rights movement, like at the yes. exact time. And so yes. I thought that would be very interesting to learn about yeah. um, and everything like that. Um, let's see, I guess I'll just jump right in. So I kind of, I researched, I know you said um, like George Wallace was the yes. governor at the time and he, I looked up one of his speeches, and he said, um, in one quote was, segregation today, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. So, like, did you hear these speeches, and, like, how did you feel about that? Like, were you, like, yes. yeah, or were you, like, what is he saying? I heard them, and I was angry, because I was an Air Force kid raised in Tucson. My best friend in first grade was a black girl, but I didn't know it, and this is a true story. Um... When I started first grade, I met her, and I just thought we were twins. She was tall. She loved to read. And I just thought we are exact twins. And then, you know, living on Air Force Base is safe. So after school, I went over to her house, and I rang the doorbell, and a black lady came out and answered the door. And then I looked at my friend and realized she was black. black. And so kids just don't color. see that. Yeah, they just That's don't amazing. see it. Yeah, and so I had grown up with, you know, with races mixed all my life. So when we moved to Alabama and I heard people say these hateful things, I was angry. Because you're friends and you live. Mm -hmm. So you lived, like, in a neighborhood or kind of on the base where there are a lot of, like, black people there, too? Well, it wasn't on the base. We had oh. to live. My dad was going to Air War College. And um, so we had to live off base. And so... The area we lived in was completely segregated, completely white. But my mom um, hired someone to clean our house, and she came from a completely segregated black area of Montgomery, Alabama. But since she was our sister in Christ, we always ate together, and we as children were very respectful to her. And my mom would drive her home, so we had gone to her neighborhood too. Okay. So your parents were totally like against segregation? Well, my mother was against segregation because she was a Christian, and she grew up in Northern Ireland where people have had so much devastation from hating people and discriminating against people that are even the same color because mm -hmm. they're Catholic or Protestant, but they're not really yeah. Christians or religious. They're full of hate from thousands of years of oppression from English mm -hmm. landowners, basically. But um, because my mother was raised in a Christian family in Belfast, Ireland, she was against all discrimination okay. and hatred and so segregation. So because she came from somewhere else. Yeah. My father was from Missouri and was not a Christian at the time, so he actually was a little racist. And we as children really didn't like that mm -hmm. because we had, you know, had friends of every color. Yeah. So were, did your mom try to, like, raise you up and your dad trying to raise you up different? Like, was your dad trying Completely to put his different. thoughts on you? Completely different. He would show us how unhappy we were mm. and be a snob and be rude to our friends who were black and um, who would come over to the house. My mom was an on-fire Christian and really was full of love. So you guys, Jesus. like, did you go to church every week? Uh -huh. And were you... When you went to those church, was it a segregated church? It was a completely segregated church. So there was like separate churches for black people, separate for yes. white people, and there yes. were like none mixed. Like that was like a unheard not of. mixed at all. Okay. I don't know if it was unheard of. I'm sure there were some good churches, but we just went to the local Methodist church, and it was mm -hmm. completely segregated. However, <laughs> my wonderful mother, when we lived in Tucson, would take us down downtown Tucson, and would go to little. Um, wonderful little prayer meetings in the middle of the week when my dad wasn't home. <laughs> She'd take herself and her four kids down there and we would be the only white people in a little black church. And so we were used to worshiping mm -hmm. with, with people. Yeah. 
All right, so did you ever, like, as you grew up, try to fight for, like, kind of what Martin Luther King Jr. fought for was, like, nonviolence and stuff like that? Did you ever try to, like, go to protests and stuff like that, and how was that? Well, there weren't any protests going on in 1966, which is when I lived there, and the laws had already been changed back in the 50s with um, Rosa Parks in right. Montgomery, mm -hmm. Alabama, yeah. and they had organized the most amazing boycott, and people don't realize that in order for them to have that successful boycott, which lasted a whole year in Montgomery, Alabama, white people that had the love of Jesus in their hearts and were decent people, they would drive all of the people to work. Like if somebody cleaned your house, oh, yeah. you would go get them at their house in segregated Montgomery and to you would show, bring I'm them. To help these people. Yeah. And um, they were wonderfully organized. They all organized, you know, rides together in order mm -hmm. to get to work and everything. So that went on in the 50s. And when I lived in there, yeah, when I lived there in 1966, the racism was still horrible about buses. So right. what happened one day, I was on my way to school on a city bus. All of us had to ride a city bus to the junior high, the public junior high. And a lady got on the bus, and she looked very tired. It was in the afternoon after school. And so I got up and gave her my seat. And I almost caused a, a little <laughs> riot with all the racist middle schoolers. Oh, my goodness. One boy that I didn't know, I was just 11 years old, and this big boy comes up to me and says, Don't you do that. You don't give a black lady your seat. And I just looked up and said, My mother taught me to respect my elders. And he was very surprised. But they just went, they would always, you know, sit together, all the white kids from the junior high, and they were just making horrible, rude comments. And this is 10 years after mm -hmm the law was changed. Right, so like, they're allowed to, but they still didn't, did this like, did this make people, or blacks, not want to go on the buses? Like, did they kind of stay away no, from that's, it? No, that's all they had. Aww. And they were used to it. When you're raised, even right. today, you know, in 2020, when I go to the airport in Atlanta, Georgia, which is where my son lives, I can hardly get a black person to look me in the eye. Aww. And it upsets it's me a lot. What really made us mad is when we moved from South Dakota to Montgomery, Alabama, we hit Mississippi and saw our first white ladies only sign mm -hmm. on a door and pretty much stayed mad for a whole year. So we did a lot of good work in our neighborhood with other kids because we had a lot of friends. And the Air Force kids, we just didn't allow our new friends to be racist. and. You could see them over the year thinking hard and stepping out of their racism and prejudice that their parents had raised them mm -hmm. in. And we saw a lot of them change. Um, my brother went to a high school, and he was on the football team. So he would be walking down the hallway at Sydney Lanier High School in Montgomery, Alabama, and feel something on the back of his neck, and the racist kids would spit on him. And his friend. And I'm yes. talking, you see how big I am. You know, my brother was bigger <laughs> than that. Tall. But they were so full of hate. They couldn't stand. Just because stand. he associated with black Because, people? yeah. And it was an oh enforceably integrated school. Wow. That's... Yeah. Now, I have to say, a good thing that happened to me in Dallas, Texas, a couple of years later, was another situation where kids were being bused, forcibly integrated high school. And I, it happened right when I started school there, at the beginning of the year. And, you know, everybody's going, oh, no, what's going to happen? Because I was like in an affluent um, neighborhood, but they never won their football games. They had a lousy football mm -hmm. team in this rich little high school. And the first week of school, the first football game, because they had been forcibly integrated and had black members that were really good on the football team, they won. <laughs> so and they when you came to school you... Monday, there was no more racism. That's amazing! Just because... And you have to have lived in Alabama, oh, wow. you know, Bear Bryant and, yeah. and Auburn and Crimson Tide and just all that, and in Texas to know how important football is in those yes. places. You basically don't exist in high school unless you're, unless you're part of the football team, cheerleading team. 
something pep squad. And so when I came to school Monday, it was amazing to see that the most racist kids were celebrating their win altogether. Having the busing force them to be integrated. Wow, that is. And they won the whole season. And you just saw their minds. Black people are a part of us. (laughs) Yeah. So when you went to school, it was like colored water fountains at the start? Or like when you were like little, were there any stuff like that? There were just no black kids. Even when I went to school, even though they're supposed to be integration, Mm -hmm. I never saw a black kid in Montgomery, Alabama. When I moved to Dallas, Texas, like I say, they had just forcibly integrated the high school. So I walked into the art class and I'm looking around because I started school a little bit late. My dad transferred and I see an open table. So I go there to sit because there was one table that had like 13 girls all crowded sitting around it in the art class. And I went, you know, I'm I'm not going to sit there. I love art. I'm going to go sit somewhere else. And I didn't even notice I sat by a black girl. And so this is sad, but after a few weeks, the girls at the crowded table decided I was okay. I wore the right kind of clothes. And I'm really sorry to say that some of them had to have been Christians Mm. because the reason they came over to me is they saw some art that I made that was glorifying to Jesus and had a Bible verse on it. So then they came over and they said, why don't you come sit with us? And they thought I was going to be so happy. And I just looked up at them and I looked at my table and I just, there's a lot more room here. And I really didn't know the black girl that much. She didn't want to talk to me mm-hmm. that much. And so we didn't become friends. But let me tell you, the smile on her face that mm-hmm. day, she's looking over at the racist going, ha ha, <laughs> that's great. She'd oh rather sit with me yeah. at this table than with you. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, let's see, did you... Did you realize you lived in the Deep South, and did you realize that the North was maybe further along in this sort of stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because um, the rest of the United States did not know how bad it was in the South. Right. And they did not know that governors like Governor Wallace, Mm -hmm. you know, just defied the law. They didn't know until in the 1950s they started showing it on the evening news that dogs and fire hoses and all of those horrible things were used on, you know, Americans who were trying to protest. So um, I already knew all about the racism, but I didn't feel anything until I saw that white lady sign and until my brother got spit on in the back of the neck Mm -hmm. and... And then you realize, like, wow, I'm in where this is happening. Yes, and I knew that other places were not like that. Did you ever want to move, like, further north? To, like, get away? Uh, we from only me? had to live there one year, both in Alabama and in Texas. I knew I was out of there. Right. But I did want to change things as much as I could. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, I'm a shy person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just learned from my brothers and sisters to be very outgoing and being in the Air Force. I was in five high schools, so you have to learn oh, to yeah. make friends. Mm-hmm. But um, I was determined to be brave that year and to never, ever give in to someone who was hateful. So did, um, did your faith, like, really help you with that? Like, do you think if yes. you weren't, wouldn't have been Christian, you would yes. have been more indifferent? Oh, yes, I would have been scared to death. Like that big old mm-hmm. boy coming over to me when I was just 11 right. years old. And instead, I let him have it. <laughs> The other thing that was really, really neat is um, my mom being a Christian and respecting her, you know, her Christian sister who cleaned our house, gave her the courage without even knowing it. We found out later from our friends that the lady who cleaned our house went around to all her other customers and said, I'm asking for a pay raise. And they would be disrespectful to her and she'd just look at him and say, well, Mrs. Stockton, the colonel's wife, pays me, da 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 and that's what I'm asking you to pay me for. That's great. And they're very proud, and so they didn't want to be shown up by a colonel's wife who yeah, right. lived there. Okay. okay, this is like actually super, super interesting. 
Okay, so you, was George Wallace, he only lived there for like a little while. I lived there one year, but he okay. was governor then, and he was a racist then. Right. And if you did the research later on, he, there's an assassination attempt on his life, and he was crippled and became a Christian, a true Christian, and stopped being a racist. So did you see all that about his story, like, after you had after moved, I moved away, and you're like, wow, this guy, I remember him, and he, yeah. like, totally changed. And, and the year after I moved, Martin Luther King was assassinated. Oh my April goodness, 4th, 1968. That's crazy. And it so broke our hearts. Happening. It broke our hearts because we knew how much he, changed. he had done. And he was not a perfect man. I mean, if you research his life, he made, you know, some real moral failures mm -hmm. and things like that, but Boy, did that guy preach Jesus in terms of peace, yeah. being stronger, you know. Than, Not giving into violence. Yeah, and than like violence that. and love being stronger than yeah. hate. That's great. Um, okay, so you, uh, let's see. I think the, was the Selma to Montgomery March around when you lived? Was that 60s? That was before. I think okay, that, that was, was before. before, yeah. So there were, were there any like, I mean, you said there weren't riots because right when you moved, no. there were none, nothing no. like that. They had already done the job of getting the law passed. Right. Okay. And so the laws were in effect. The civil rights laws were pretty much 1964. Mm -hmm. So that should have taken care of everything. Before you got there. Yeah, the voting laws had legally been mandated. You mm -hmm. know, all the civil rights um, with uh, President JFK and Johnson after um, JFK was assassinated, the laws were changed. The Supreme Court had made sure there were no Jim Crow laws. Mm -hmm. But what was but really happening... But your parents definitely were seeing all the Jim Crow laws and the, the white mm -hmm. people passing on the streets before the black people would go yeah. over and like all of that. Yes. And then, were you old enough to remember like the police, like the hoses and all that Yeah, we'd see them on the news when I was a kid. On the TV? Yeah. That's and so your dad would just see that and be indifferent to it? Yes. Yes. In fact, I was shocked. Um, I was watching a special on the Buffalo Soldiers this last weekend. General Pershing, whom I admire so much, uh, during World War I, when many black soldiers enlisted and they went over to Europe, um, they were not allowed to be in combat by General mm. Pershing. And the French said, we will help you, and they gave them supplies and everything and treated them with great respect. And General Pershing wrote an official letter to the French um, military people and said, we in America consider black people inferior. Wow. Yeah. And so, you know, even General Pershing, who was a great general, he had that Still. prejudice too. Wow. Um, we thought it was funny when my dad had to have a black commanding officer. Oh. My dad was a colonel, but if he had a higher ranking colonel or a general, we just thought that was hilarious when he had to go had to, 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 to work every day and salute him. Oh. Would he like <laughs> grumble about that or would he complain that that person was in power? Um, yeah. Or just kept it to himself? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's funny. But we saw through it. Yeah. Because right. it wasn't Christ like. It was an authentic um, Christian behavior. Was voting very, very different? Like, did you see racism in voting places when, like, black people would go? I like, honestly didn't laws? see any of it. I was 11, and right. I was Little. unaware of anything political. Okay. Um, let's see. So, how do you feel now that there's no segregation anywhere? Like, did you feel like we would get to this point where there's, like, where we're pretty much all equal? It is so wonderful to live in Tucson. I can't say that it's not still segregated yeah. in the Deep South. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, <laughs> I have a very godly relative, and we were visiting with her over Christmas, and, and even she said to me something about the Civil War, and she's the sweetest Christian lady, and she said, well, honey, you know what side I'm still on. <laughs> I'm still oh, on. my goodness. But it's just, you know, it's your home. Like, General Lee, I right. have a lot of respect for him because it was his home he was defending. That makes sense. You know, right. so during the Civil War, he went to West Point, and um, he fought to defend his home. Yeah. So I, you know, you gotta, you got to try to see how people are understanding. But um, 
as a mom of three teenage boys, I do think about the fact that black teenage boys are often doubted and in our country we are still dealing with right. that True and people. the Christian pastors I know that have had to sit down with their sons and say you know other teenage boys aren't going to be in danger but you if you are ever around a policeman you cannot defend yourself All right you are actually in danger of being misunderstood still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's and a lot of... Most people stories. wouldn't be that way, but there's still... There's still mm -hmm. people that are prejudiced and think that they're superior based on the color of their skin. Do you still have a lot of friends who... Like you were saying, that one woman, a lot of friends who are still racist and still kind of like stuck back in that thing? You know, and I can't say that my friend is racist at all. <laughs> yeah, but Because she's not. She's so loving. But yes, if you go to the deep so south, you would, you would be shocked. You would be shocked. And I've yeah, I've never visited Alabama or any of the stuff like that. You know, it is really good to go there. I know. It's good I to go to different and, like, regions. See it for myself. Yes. It's yeah, because you will meet lovely people, and then you will be shocked to hear them. Yes. And even just hearing your point of yeah. view on it is like kind of crazy. Um. You know, I had a mom. We do a little play in second grade, and it's it's on the life of Martin Luther King as a child. And um, she's an amazing mom. And in her family, she's got two boys. They're white, and her youngest daughter is black. And so usually when we have the play, your sister was in it, and all the parents are just mm -hmm. beaming, and they're so proud of their children and everything. And I kept looking at this mom, and she was not happy. And I couldn't figure out, because her daughter was doing this amazing job of being um, Martin Luther King's mother. And, and I thought... What's going on? Why isn't she happy? And afterwards, she came up to me, and she was fighting back tears because she grew up in Tucson, and she said, I didn't know. I really, I mean, I've read history, but I didn't know how it felt oh, she didn't know for Martin Luther story. King wow. to be a little boy and up to the age of five be best friends with the white kids next door and play baseball, baseball. with them every yeah. day. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, no. My children won't ever yes. play with you again, and we will punish them, and we will whip them if they ever play with you again. Mm -hmm. And so that's what she was doing. She was learning for the first time really how it felt. Oh my felt. goodness, they were like a children's play, so that can really yeah. pop. That's so it crazy. is It is good to go and travel. That, yeah, super sick. Let's see, do you have any other stories that are like just showing like how different it was back then? Like... Or, like, more stuff to, like, kind of enlighten me? Because in my mind, it's like, yeah, I go to school with people right. of all colors and stuff like that. Right. Is there anything that would kind of, like, like show more of your perspective or, like... Well, just the only thing I can think of is that I have a friend um, who ended up going to Mexico City. Um, they had picked her to be curator of the museum at the U of A. She was really, really brilliant. She ended up being Homeland Security chief and... Um, neat gal. She didn't know she was a Christian in high school. We were Jesus freaks and sharing Jesus and all of a sudden she's talking about Jesus instead of the anarchy society. It was crazy times. It was in the 70s. Mm -hmm. But anyway this gal went down to Mexico City after she graduated from U of A and she came back and told me something that shocked me which other friends of mine that are Mexican have said is true also. She said, did you know that there's this thing called... Um, Muy Española, and that means even among Mexicans, a lot of people are racist because they value whiter skin than darker skin. Wow. And I was shocked, but like I say, you know, where my mom grew up, it wasn't even skin. It was just teaching your children you are better than somebody else based on your skin color. So even so. in like Mexico and stuff, they'll value people with lighter skin than even when they're yes, the same not race. everybody, but yeah, right, but yeah. Cases. And I had no idea. Oh, that that I've went never on. thought about that. I thought it yeah. was like just America, because you don't ever hear about no. giant civil rights movements. Yeah, another. No, if you want to know about the worst racism I've ever heard of, my sister is a South African citizen. My missionary sister, Sharman Stockton, and when she lived in South Africa, they still had apartheid. That meant that only three out of a hundred students 
would be allowed to go to the university no matter how brilliant they were if they were black. Oh, that wow. meant that 200 people had to share the same bathroom. Oh my goodness. That meant that if a black person was on a sidewalk and didn't jump in the street when a white person passed by, the black person could be arrested and oh, maybe never show up again. And what year was this in? Until the 70s, if you want to go wow, research that. Finally, Jesus. South Africa was banned from the Olympics. Oh my goodness. And everybody in the world was just gone. Come on. Going but on? it was Nelson Mandela who became president, co-president with a white guy, de Klerk, that finally was able to be strong enough to lead the country into not having racism, not having apartheid, and also not falling apart. Because other countries in Africa, when they finally gave the blacks the vote, it might be through a, a system that was totalitarian, like Zimbabwe. If you ever do the research, okay. it's really interesting. Yeah, I'm also just doing research on America, but this is very interesting yeah. to hear about other yeah. countries. So in South Africa, there had been such murders and atrocities and horrible, horrible hatreds ever since colonization by the English and the Dutch back mm -hmm. in the 1600s and the slave trade and everything. There was so much hatred there that um, Nelson Mandela preached Jesus, went to a missionary school. And wow. so <clears throat> one thing that happened when the blacks got the vote, a lot of people said, these missionary schools are racist. These were Europeans. These were people that ran the school and they were racist. Let's close them all down. And President Nelson Mandela said, no, you will honor these people. And he had a huge parade. Wow. Oh my goodness. And my sister marched in that parade, Sherman Stockton. And he said, I was educated by these missionary schools. They knew I was a man. They wow. gave me dignity. That's how I started my education and got my law it was degree. Through that little missionary school. Yeah. And that was all in Africa? Yes, South That's Africa. Crazy. The country of South Africa. Wow, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. That's about all I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Rachel Priggy. I was the interviewer in the last couple clips you just watched. And I'm sorry the video ended so abruptly, uh, right in the middle of a sentence. Uh, I wanted to pop on here and say it's because the camera stopped filming, so you're missing the last 10, 15 minutes of uh, footage that I had there. Uh, I just wanted to say the only part you missed is we had a really good conversation about um, how the book Uncle Tom's Cabin, uh, the lady I was interviewing, she, when she was in college, she watched that book bring um, a TA in her class to faith. And so we just had a really good conversation about how he didn't realize the book was about Christianity. And um, I'm really sorry you missed that content, but I tried to reschedule. And of course, all of this corona virus has really impacted a lot of schoolwork and things like that. Um, so I just wanted to hop on here and say you're not missing too much, but thank you for watching the stuff that did get filmed. I really appreciate it. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy all the other videos on this website. Thank you.